hemolytic uremic syndrome. It affects multiple organ systems and thus may present with a wide range of manifestations. Children may present with irritability or their parents may describe an alteration in their usual behavior. Patients both young and old may appear tired or lethargic with pale skin due to anemia. Elevated indirect bilirubin can result in scleral ectoris and jaundice. While platechia or evidence of bruising are sometimes present due to thrombocytopenia. However, despite low platelet counts, there usually isn't any purpura nor signs of active bleeding. Abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting are common, while some gastrointestinal complications that occur with less frequency include intussusception and gangrenous bowel. Decreased urine output may be due to dehydration and vomiting, but oligouria, edema, and elevated blood pressure should further elicit suspicion of renal failure. Neurologic involvement can result in confusion, seizures, and even severe coma or stroke. Other complications include hepatitis and pancreatic insufficiency, which usually results in a transient glucose intolerance. While a variety of signs and symptoms may be present, consideration of the underlying etiology can alert you to the classic triad of hemolytic uremic syndrome, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute kidney injury. The most common form of hemolytic uremic syndrome occurs due to an infection with shiga toxin producing E. coli. Many different strains have been known to cause the condition, including the well-known 0157H70 type. It begins with a gastrointestinal prodrome that includes diarrhea, which may or may not be bloody, abdominal pain, and or vomiting. The causative pathogen is often contracted from undercooked beef, unpasteurized foods, and contaminated lakes and swimming pools. If the patient presents with diarrhea or has experienced a gastrointestinal prodrome, then order a stool culture and or assay for pathogenic organisms, but it is not recommended to treat with antibiotics or antimotility agents. Other secondary causes of hemolytic uremic syndrome include pregnancy, infection with streptococcus pneumonia or HIV, exposure to certain drugs such as cyclosporine or quinine, and systemic disease such as lupus. A family history of the condition should alert you to the possibility of primary hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is less common but tends to be more severe. The CBC and blood smear usually reveals anemia with reticulocytosis and evidence of microangiopathy, such as cystocytes and helmet cells. Hemolysis may result in a decreased haptoglobin level and elevated levels of serum lactate dehydrogenase and indirect bilirubin. Thrombocytopenia and evidence of renal dysfunction, indicated by elevated serum levels of creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, complete the classic triad of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Electrolyte abnormalities are also common, such as hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. The PT and PTT are not prolonged, which is helpful in ruling out DIC and other causes of thrombocytopenia. As well, the Coombs test is usually negative. The degree and duration of hemolysis and thrombocytopenia do not correlate with the severity of renal failure. Once the diagnosis is established, management is primarily supportive. Dehydrated patients are given replacement fluids with close attention to fluid balance and urine output, electrolyte imbalances are corrected, and red blood cells are infused for patients with severe anemia. Patients with elevated blood pressure may require antihypertensive medication, such as calcium channel blockers, and early dialysis is recommended for patients with renal failure. Unless an invasive procedure is required, platelet transfusions are seldom necessary as clinically significant bleeding is uncommon in patients with hemolytic uremic syndrome. And furthermore, platelet transfusions are usually avoided because they may result in clinical deterioration. Other treatments that are not recommended, either because of limited utility or evidence that they do more harm than good, include TPA, antithrombotic therapies, and sugar toxin binding agents. On the other hand, Ikiluzumab and plasma exchange or infusion may be helpful in certain cases, particularly in patients with complement-mediated hemolytic uremic syndrome.